Rowan tree, Rowan tree, how art thou so dear to me? Hi folks, we're out today in one of my local walking parks, dog walking parks. I've uh, got my uh, my friend here as well to keep me company. And we're going to be talking about the Rowan tree today. Um, uh, folklore and history and uses, of course, as per usual. So let's have a look at uh, one of our lovely Rowan trees. It's just coming into autumn now. Um, so we're well into autumn, actually. Uh, so the leaves are all starting to fall off the trees. So it's not the, the most glorious Rowan tree you're ever going to see. But still, we'll have a good look anyway. So our own trees now coming into autumn, you will find these clusters of lovely big red berries. The leaves, we did have a look at the leaves earlier in the year. They grow in pairs. They're slightly long and oblong. And they have these very slightly sort of serrated edges to them. In the, um, in the spring, you get big umbrella fir flowers on them, just like you do with elder. But this one flowers a lot earlier than uh, elder. Now these lovely big red berries, they are, they are edible, but you need to cook them first. They're really, really good to make into jams and preserves. Um, uh, Rowan jelly is apparently very, very good with meats. I don't eat meat, so I don't know, but I've been told it's a good alternative to cranberry. Uh, and I quite often mix it with crab apple, make Rowan and crab apple jelly. So I do recommend that. It's very nice. You can also make wines and things like that as well. And our lovely Rowan trees have got a really long history of protective qualities to them so quite often people would plant these in their gardens or around their borders um, to guard against malevolent energies naughty spirits witches things like that and one of the reasons for that is under the roanberry you'll see on the bottom they've got this little star shape this little pentagram shape on the bottom now the five-pointed star the pentagram is most closely uh, these days associated with neo-paganism but it's a much much older symbol than that it's a really old protective symbol you'll sometimes see it on the insides of ch on the insides of church windows on really really old churches so it has that that protective quality to it and um, in folklore these berries were made into protective charms to hang on doors, uh, on cattle doors in particular, to stop cattle being stolen away by, uh, by the fairies. Um, and we're going to make one of those as well. We're going to collect some of these berries and uh, make, make a rowan charm. Medicinally, um, the, it's not one that's used in modern uh, herbalism very often. But traditional medicinal uses are against uh, stomach problems, coughs, colds, rheumatism, and things like that. They're also really, really high in vitamin C, so really good for um, not getting things like scurvy. Uh, not that that's a massive problem these days. So we'll collect some of the berries now, and we'll take them home, we'll give them a dry, and uh, we'll, uh, we'll see if we can make a charm with them. Here you go folks, this is probably a much better example of what the leaves on the row look like. So you can see that slightly serrated edge there, the slightly long leaf, and that they grow in pairs. There you go folks, so row and protection charm, all finished. So have a little go with that. Rowan's just coming into the end of the season here in Wales, so hopefully in your areas you might be a, a bit luckier than me and find a rowan tree with some more berries on it. But you don't need loads to make a nice little charm there. Let me know how you get on, let me know if you've enjoyed a bit more of a magical theme today, and I'll see you on the next one. Hi folks, so we have gone out, got the rowan berries. What I've done is I've put them on the dryer overnight just to dry them out a little bit so 
these have all been on the dryer some of them are still a bit more squishy than i would like but it's fine because they're gonna dry out on the charm as we go so what we're gonna need is you're gonna need a needle and thread so ideally you're gonna need a quite a thick needle okay like a sewing needle Traditionally, to make any sort of protective charm, you're supposed to use red thread. I haven't actually got any red thread, so um, use what you've got. So we're going to have a needle and thread. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to, to stop all the berries coming off at the bottom, I'm going to pop a charm on the bottom. So I'm going to use this like leftover little pentagram charm because we talked about obviously the five pointed star but you can use a really easy thing to use would be a, um, a hagstone so you can find these on the beach they're really common in this part of Wales on the beach it's just a natural stone a hole formed in a stone uh, usually formed on the coast so you could use something like that or whatever you've got to hand so what we're going to do is we're literally going to take our needle and thread and we're going to thread it through the row and berries and we're just going to make like a string of them so we'll do that now so what you could do while you're um, threading the berries onto this charm is you could uh, you could chant you could pray uh, you could ask for protection from your deities whoever they may be a really good um, deity to work with uh, for protection charms is Bridget so Bridget is um, the goddess of hearth and home but in christian beliefs she's also a saint of hearth and home as well so she's quite good she crosses those religious sort of divides so you could make this charm for for somebody who was also a christian if you wanted and invoke invoke bridget um, I often see rowan trees in churches as well as a church that um, a friend of mine used to live near to and they had a whole row of beautiful rowan trees just on the outside. So even in, you know, even in uh, Christian culture, they're obviously recognised as a protective tree. So you could say as you were doing this, for example, uh, Bridget, goddess or saint of hearth and home, please protect my home and all who reside in it. Or you could say something like, for example, you could just be something as simple as um, goddess or saint Bridget, bring safety to this home, I pray. You know, I'm very much of the belief that you kind of do what feels right for you so we're just going to keep going until we've made like a whole chain of these um these rowan berries so and as i said it's gonna the ones that aren't quite dry they'll dry um on the charm as well Okay, you can see I've got a nice string going on there. This is about as long as I want to make mine. Well, you can make yours as long as you want. Uh, you could loop it round and tie it and make it almost like a little rosary if you really wanted to. Um, or as meditation beads. And again, once you've, they've dried out, those are going to make lovely meditation beads. So what we'll do is I'm gonna, just going to tie it off at the top here. I'm going to make like a little loop because um, what I do is I hang my protection charms outside. So I want to be able to hang this outside. So we'll tie this off now and um, then I'll go and put it somewhere safe. 